All right, we're going to take a look now at the Nyquist criteria and how that relates to this whole issue of stability and um, stability in the, in the sense we may have an uncertainty. So in general, in the, in the stability, the Nyquist stability criterion, we may have some k, which may be a controller gain, like a proportional gain, times our transfer function in the loop, which gives us this closed loop transfer function. And so we want to know for a particular value of k if this system, the closed loop system is stable given what knowledge we have of the open loop system. In order to do this, the Nyquist criteria requires something called the Nyquist contour. And the Nyquist contour is basically a contour that contains the entire right half plane. <clears throat> now we, use, we often think of a, a plane as being rectangular, but there's no reason to think of it that way. We, we don't have to. We can think of it as a semicircle of radius infinity. And that also contains the entire right half plane. So the Nyquist contour is a contour that contains the entire right half plane, and it has a direction. So in general, it avoids any poles of the transfer function that might be on the imaginary axis. It goes along the imaginary axis and then has a semicircle of infinite radius and again there's a direction so for example it would start here go up along the imaginary axis go around the semicircle of radius infinity and then go up along the negative real axis okay so if we have poles on the imaginary axis basically the contour needs to avoid them and yet still include the entire right half plane and so to avoid to avoid them we take these little semicircular uh, detours of radius epsilon, where epsilon goes to zero. And, um, and so in doing so, we, in in we surround the entire right half plane, and yet we avoid the poles on the imaginary axis. So if we now uh, take our Nyquist contour and plot the transfer function, at every point on the Nyquist contour, we get something like this. So in this case, here's our transfer function. This transfer function does not have poles on the imaginary axis, and so we can just use the basic uh, Nyquist contour. And here, I've, I've chosen to use different colors. Here, red is the Nyquist contour along this part, positive imaginary part, and green has the negative imaginary part. I just do that just, just to kind of give you an idea of what's going on here. We plot every value of this, every value along this contour is a value of s. So we plug those values in to this function and we get this function. So when s is equal to zero, or at, that's this point here, we start here. And as s increases, it follows this path and eventually ends back up there. Okay, so notice that this, it starts here, it goes through zero. Why? Well, when s is equal to, so that, notice this is along the j omega, j omega axis. When s is, s is equal to j5, s squared is equal to 25, uh, s squared is equal to minus 25, and so we have a zero. S is equal to minus 25 when S is equal to S squared is equal to minus 25 when S is equal to J5. And so it goes through zero at that point. And then as, as S continues along the imaginary axis, it continues around and does this. When S goes to infinity, so this point up here, the, notice the denominator is of higher order than the numerator and so as s goes to j infinity this whole quantity goes to zero and so at this point we're back at zero and this whole semicircle of radius infinity because at infinity this quantity is equal to zero that all is maps into the single point at the origin 
So even though this looks like a large part of the contour, it actually maps into a single point on the, on the Nyquist plot. And then at this point, I come in, and that, that's this part of the Nyquist plot, which goes around, comes through, and then ends up back where this point started. So that's the Nyquist plot. We basically are mapping the Nyquist contour through the transfer function. So the Nyquist, right, the Nyquist plot, the Nyquist contour, now we have the Nyquist criterion. Nyquist criterion says this, the number of right half plane closed loop poles is equal to the number of right half plane open loop poles plus the number of clockwise encirclements of the point minus one in the complex plane. Okay, so let's take a look at what this, this, this looks like. So let's, let's take this transfer function Notice that this has no right half plane poles. And if we look at the Nyquist plot, this is what the Nyquist plot looks like. So not, this is not the Nyquist contour. This is actually the Nyquist plot. Um, and if we, it looks very similar though. But if we zoom into the origin, we can see this stuff is going on. And so, um, we want to check now the number of clockwise encirclements of the point minus one. It's maybe hard to see here, but really tiny. I have plotted the unit circle in the complex plane. And so the point minus one is on the, on the left hand side of that. And we want to check the number of encirclements of, my, of the minus one point. So the way to check that is we, we draw a line from here and we just draw it out through the entire Nyquist plot, and you can do it in any direction. Some directions are easier to check than others, but we can do it through any direction. And now we would check to see the number of clockwise encirclements. So if I think of that being a pivot point and the Nyquist plot pushing us, in this case, we can see that it's going to push us in the clockwise direction. And so notice that the arrow on this one is also going this direction. And again, if I think of that as being a pivot point, it's going to push this in the neg in the clockwise direction. And so the number of clockwise encirclements of the point minus one is two. And so the number of right half plane closed loop poles is this plus that, which is two. So for this particular system, that's what we would have. So the Nyquist criteria tells us something about stability of the system, the closed loop system, given information about the open loop system and the Nyquist plot itself. So when we come to the robust stability problem, we generally assume that the actual plant belongs to a particular set of plants. Again, it could be an additive plant, or uh, additive uncertainty, multiplicative uncertainty. And we would seek to prove stability for the entire class of problems. Okay, so if the, the entire set of unstable plants is, uh, is made stable through the closed loop, then it implies that the particular system that we may have, which is a set, which is a member of that set, is also going to be stable. So that's the particular system. So if we look, for example, at this kind of problem, here we have additive uncertainty. We have a control work, K of S. So K here is not necessarily a gain. It may be a transfer function itself. And we take this system and we look at the loop gain. So if we start here and go all the way around back to here, that's the loop gain, and we can show that it's given by this. And so that's what we would actually look at in terms of the Nyquist criterion. But if we look at this quantity now, we can think of there being a nominal open loop transfer function. So that's the nominal loop gain. So that is when I have no disturbance. So it's basically this. It's p naught times k. And we're going to assume that k is stabilizing for the nominal system. So even if the plant originally is unstable, we're assuming that this k would stabilize it. That is, we've chosen the controller to be stabilizing. Um, so we have that. And again, we're going to assume that the, 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 the um, weighting matrix w has been chosen to satisfy this uncertainty so that, so that the uncertainty satisfies this quantity. So if 
if actually the h infinity norm is greater than one then we, we basically would increase the magnitude of w to make this less than one so that the product is still the same and so we want to know if the feedback system remains stable for all uncertainties in this in the set so we look at one plus lw that's given by this expression uh, l of j omega so rather and so p naught times k is what we call l naught and then we have this uncertainty term so how would we net then um, evaluate whether this system is stable or not well we can use the Nyquist criteria so if we assume that L naught is stable okay um, then if Delta is 0 this plot does not encircle the minus 1 point okay so that's that's what we have and so as Delta is allowed to be greater than 0 um, we can get stuff happening so if we think about what's going on in this problem, suppose this is the Nyquist plot for the closed loop system. So for L naught, if we look at the Nyquist plot of L naught, this is what we have. So now we, we actually don't have L naught. One, one plus L naught is what we're looking for. We actually have L that we're working for, but L has all this other stuff over here too. Okay, and so what's going on with that? Well, we have W, Delta, and K. So delta is uncertain, but it has magnitude one. And so we can think then of that whole transfer function um, since we don't know what delta is, but we do know what W and K are, we can look at a circle of radius magnitude K, um, WK. And for a particular value of omega, this is just a number. This is just a number. And so the the uncertainty then has some magnitude. And so if we assume magnitude less than or equal to one, then the uncertainty, or, or rather this entire quantity, must be within a circle of radius that's the magnitude of WK. So at any point along this plot, I can think of there being a circle of radius magnitude WK. And, and if then, if at every point, so in, instead of having just a line that is the Nyquist plot, we can think of there being like a band, you know, like a thick line and the radius of that line varies as we go around. And if that thick line does not cross the minus one point or encircle the minus one point then the, the system is robustly stable Whew, kind of complicated yeah these problems can be kind of complicated so we've talked of in, talked about things in general now let's take a look at some practice problems maybe this will help clarify some of the uncertainty about uncertainty <laughs>